ship refueling is one such process at sea, which has been the reason for several accidents in the past. The ship refueling process is known as bunkering. In this video, we will learn about the ship refueling procedure and what important points should be taken into consideration for the overall safety of the ship. Meaning of the word bunker In the shipping industry, the word bunker is used for fuel and lube oils which are stored on ship and used for operational purpose. If a vessel is carrying marine fuel or lube oil as a cargo to discharge to another port, it will not be called as bunker. If the vessel or a barge or a truck is carrying it to transfer to another ship for using it in the machinery system, it will be termed as bunker and the operation performed for transferring the oil is known as bunkering. Types of bunker fuel Heavy fuel oil Diesel oil Marine gas oil Lube oil and LNG fuel bunker The ship sailing in the high seas usually receive bunker in port or in open water or when the ship is at anchor. The bunker fuel can be supplied to the ship by a bunker truck in port or by a smaller vessel dedicated to carrying bunker fuel usually known as bunker barge. When the ship is at anchor, the fuel is supplied by the bunker vessel or bunker barge. Ship refueling or bunkering procedure is mainly divided into three parts. The chief engineer, who is the overall in charge of the engine room department, should calculate and check which bunker oil tanks are to be filled. It might be required to empty some tanks and transfer the oil from one tank to another to prevent the mixing of two oils. A pre-bunker meeting should be held between the members who will take part in the bunkering process. No smoking notice should be positioned near the bunkering station. Red flag or red light is put on the masthead which is an indication of bunkering operation is underway. The bunker barge will then pass the hose whose one end is connected to its own tanks which carry the oil and the other end is connected to ship's bunker manifold which is receiving the oil. The condition of the hose and connection to the manifold must be checked properly by the ship's staff. Proper communication between the barge and the ship is to be established an emergency stop signal is to be discussed with each other. Once all checks are done, the manifold wall is open for proceeding bunkering. During the start of the bunker, the pumping rate is kept low to ensure that the oil is coming in the selected tank. The ship staff must track the sounding of the selected bunkering tank and other tanks which are not involved in the operation. This is to make sure oil is going to the selected tank. After confirming that oil is coming in the designated tank, the pumping rate can be increased. Usually, one tank is filled at a time. If more than one tank are filled simultaneously, it increases the chances of an overflow. One can fill any tank up to 90% of its capacity to be on the safer side. Once the tank is about to be filled to a maximum level, barge is told to decrease the pumping rate. After that, the valve of the other tank can be opened. During this whole process, sounding should be taken regularly and the frequency of sounding is increased when the tank is near full. Many vessels have tank gauges which show tank level in the control room, but this is only to be relied upon if the system is checked and working correctly. The temperature of the fuel is also very important during the bunkering process. It needs to be checked prior to taking bunker and accordingly the volume calculation should be done which will decide the quantity to be filled in the tanks. 
Generally, the barge or supplier will provide the bunker temperature. Temperature is a critical parameter, especially for bunker fuel such as heavy fuel oil and any deviation in the provided temperature value may lead to shortfall in bunker supply and loss to the company. A continuous sample is taken during bunkering with the help of sampling cock at the manifold known as the dripping sample flange. Utmost precaution needs to be taken when opening the other storage tank wall and closing the wall of the tank which is reaching the maximum fill limit. One officer must be present at bunker manifold at all times and pollution prevention kit along with fire extinguishers should be kept near the bunker station. Once the tank is filled, it is a general practice to air blow the bunkering supply line for discharging all the oil trapped in the pipelines. At this stage, make sure all sounding pipe caps are closed and keep a watch on those storage tank vents which are at their maximum limit. Do not open the connecting line between bunker ship and receiving manifold as in case of any discrepancies, the supplier may agree to compensate the shortfall and resume the bunkering operation. Draft and trim of the ship must be checked and noted. The volume bunker should be corrected for trim, heel and temperature correction. In general, for each degree of increase in temperature, the density should be reduced by 0.64 kg per meter cube. Four samples are taken during bunkering. One is kept on board, one for the bunker ship or barge, one for lab analysis and one for port state and other regulatory authorities. After everything is settled, the hose connection is removed. The sample is then sent for laboratory analysis. The chief engineer will make the entry of the operation in oil record book along with the received bunker delivery note. If there is any shortfall in the supplied quantity, the chief engineer can raise a note of protest to the supplier and the copy is forwarded to the head office which includes written details of the dispute. The new bunker should not be used until the report from the lab has been received by the ship or office and it endorses the fuel is okay to use.